new economy is one that thrives on innovation, artistic vision, entrepreneurship, connectivity, technology, and growth. The title of the painting on the slide behind me is Bringing It All Back Home. It is an Ian Bodie original. Ian Bodie is a Pinch, West Virginia native, living in Charleston now. And I love the imagery in this painting because well, you can see that the dome is peeled back. The explosion of fabulous things seems to be coming out of the dome. The gears are turning. I just like this imagery. And I thought it was perfect as a backdrop for my talk today. Today I'm going to tell you the story about a West Virginia girl who actually never dreamed of leaving. She figured out what she wanted to do, and that was to teach. And there were certainly plenty of people in West Virginia to teach. But the universe had a different plan for her. That girl is me. So I was born in West Virginia, the fifth kid of six. My parents had three sets of two, 10 years apart, roughly. So if you're familiar with birth order theory, you'll understand what I'm about to say. I'm the oldest of the youngest, and I'm a middle kid. <laughs> My father, he could fix anything, and it seemed like he knew everyone. He had a winning personality, he had a joke ready for any occasion, and he could sell snowballs to Eskimos. He provided the soundtrack for our lives. My sweetheart's a mule in the mine. I drive her without rain or line. All day I just sit, I chew and I spit. All over my sweetheart's behind. <laughs> so I thought that was his song for many, many, many years. But uh, so you're kind of getting context here. My mother, she was the dreamer. She wanted my father and her to run a small business. My grandfather was the first to own a ref refrigeration company in Beckley, West Virginia. It took 16, well, 12 to 16 unbelievably hard years. Some family members say 12, some say 16, to figure out that that plan was never going to manifest as envisioned. Too bad there wasn't an emphasis on a fail faster back then. Fail faster, get on with something else. Well, my mother, she would frequently say, Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Isn't that exciting? So, what's the plan? The plan? I, I didn't have one. But then again, I was, was a good kid. And I never got into trouble. I did okay in school, so maybe that was why everybody thought I had a plan. Maybe the default expectation was to lay low, don't cause trouble, don't rock the boat, just do your own thing. Don't get in anybody's hair. Maybe that's the message to West Virginia as well. So I never planned to leave the state, though I ended up living and working around the world for 20 years. I was never one of those kids who needed the wide open spaces that the Dixie Chicks sing about. I didn't need to chase my tail around the world to find myself, and actually I was pretty sure I had it pretty locked on right here at home. It was the universe that sent me packing around the world. It was a reduction in force notice from my first job teaching in Boone County, West Virginia. That was the first step in a life-changing journey of self-discovery, personal learning, professional development. I had absolutely no idea what was in store for me. Looking back, I had a few aha moments that have brought me to where I am, and uh, I promise it's relevant to the conversation. I'm a new economy girl. I'm a community and economic developer. So let's do a quick index of my aha experiences. 1991, the apple pie ridge moment. The moment I realized another school system in another state was really interested in me. I didn't even remember going to the job fair where I had an interview with them. That's how little stock I put in me going out of state. I, I remember no details. It was shocking when the phone call came through from Apple Pie Ridge Elementary, quite possibly the sweetest school on the planet. 
interested in me. The 1998 lost in Tokyo moment. I experienced being functionally illiterate in a foreign country. I was given a driver's license and I bought a car, signed documentation I couldn't read, and the joke was always, no matter how lost you got, all roads lead back to Atsugi. Later, that would translate to all roads lead back home. The 1999 Thai country roads moment. So a girlfriend from the Department of Defense schools and I, we were traveling together and we were in Bangkok. And uh, we had been doing whatever we were doing all day long and we found a hotel and we stopped in and we said, wow, let's have some dessert. Because life is decadent. And um, we walked in, it was Tex-Mex night. I'm in Bangkok, it's Tex-Mex night. It's a mariachi band. We're the only ones in the restaurant, so we sit at a window seat and we're giggling because it's really intense. These three guys and all duded up and they're um, curious Tex-Mex uh, garb. They're singing an unnatural version of Country Roads <laughs> to us. So my friend Kelly starts laughing because almost everywhere we go, we hear John Denver's Country Roads in some way or another. Well, as they were singing, I was looking out the window and um, I know that I saw a woman washing dishes in what looked like a pothole, a hole in the ground with kind of dirty water. And she was washing dishes and utensils while unclothed children were chasing chickens around in this makeshift urban barnyard. And I was thinking how grateful I am to be from West Virginia, how lucky I am, how, how I took so much for granted. So when they finished, I looked up and I said, so you do know you're singing an Appalachian song, right? Kelly goes, oh, please. And I said, well, you know, it's Tex-Mex night, they need to know. What do you know about West Virginia? and their faces lit up, and the spokesperson said, West Virginia, home of the poor boy. Very, very, very poor there. Wow. Okay. Year 2000, turn of the century, the Himalayan moment. My buddy and I get up at 2 a.m. to hike to a point where we can experience this once in a lifetime moment where just the right weather conditions were going to allow us to see the sun rise on the rooftop of the world. That's how geeky I am. I thought, let's go to the rooftop of the world for the turn of the century, because we could. And uh, so it happened. Just the right moment. The sun lit up the second highest peak on the planet. And it was at that moment that I realized I was born in the world's most ancient mountains. And I totally took that for granted. Oh, those West Virginia hills, how majestic and how grand. With their summits bathing glory, like the Prince Emmanuel's land. Is it any wonder then that my heart with rapture fills when I think of all my loved ones in those West Virginia hills. 2002, the taxi cab ride. I'm in San Diego, and this was way before Cash Cab. I shared a five-minute cab ride with the wife of a Serbian political leader who had started his own political party to fight the corruption at home. They lived in Pasadena, had a daughter in San Diego, and this woman was intense. She didn't mince any words. Somehow she took a liking to me. Literally, this was a five-minute ride, life-changing ride, and she said, what's your life's mission? And I stumbled and I told her I was a teacher and I told her I was nice and I told her I was from West Virginia and I, she said, you need to have a mission statement. It needs to be succinct. <laughs> I couldn't tell her succinctly. 
She handed me a book about the uh, subculture in Japan and said, get succinct so your talents are not wasted and you can focus your gifts on results that matter. So, my mission statement is that I align my skills, my talent, my energy, and my vision with projects that make things better. Today's the first day of the rest of your life, Sarah. 2006. I've got to reinvent myself again. You gotta be kidding me moment. My parents needed me. And I had an employer in San Diego that understood that I could do this. She allowed me to telework from West Virginia. My clients in San Diego had no idea where I was. I was even more effective this way. The whole office was streamlined to support my business development work and my workforce development uh, training program design. It got to be a pretty well-oiled uh, machine. So I bought a big house in Charleston. I pried my parents out of their house of 40 years and in case that wasn't enough for me. Also pulled grandma out at 97 years old and said, why does she come and live with us too? It's called the compound. So I also went into business with my fabulously talented, hardworking sister, Rebecca Kimmons. And uh, her ideas and creative energy are still just what West Virginia towns need. Create um, Catalyst Development Strategies was born, a triple bottom line mission-based consultancy. I had no idea, though, how hard it would be to do what I do here. And the reasons that, there are, that, that it's so hard to do what I do here never match up with what the Chamber of Commerce complains about. 2006. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, Sarah. The I can't live here moment. My new husband told me that he didn't want to live in West Virginia. Now I have mom, dad, grandma, business, crazy busy, passionate. And he says, I can't do it. I know I said I'd do it, but I can't do it. There's no deal flow here. See, he was a venture capitalist is a venture capitalist. There's no deal flow here and no plan to fix things. No, no plan to let West Virginia capitalize on its incredible natural assets and its human capital assets. No new economy potential here that I can see. Let's, let's go somewhere else. Crushing. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, Sarah. The Santa Fe moment. I was holding my new baby, 2008 looking at what people largely referred to as mystical, magical mountains. You know, New Mexico. They're magic mountains, healing mountains. I was teleworking from Santa Fe, uh, commuting to San Diego and to West Virginia, working on new economy projects. And I couldn't help but wonder why my mountains were ridiculed as the home of feckless hillbillies. What was really behind all these reports where West Virginia tops the list of everything bad and is on the bottom rung of everything good? It's still a real problem. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, Sarah. 2012, behold, it's working moment. Energy efficient building codes are passed this year, saving an estimated $200 million of West Virginia dollars that are blown routinely out of doors and windows. Most people, trust me, don't think about these things. A digital media incubator is getting ready to launch called Digiso in a new co-working space designed for creative community, economic, and community development. It's a real partnership, a real tangible partnership with a product that you can walk in, listen to, work in, learn in, grow in, party in. It's a co-working space designed for mobile creatives, solopreneurs, pre-entrepreneurs. It's the first space of its kind, open to the public. It includes flexible meeting space, studio space for film, video, rich media production, 
affordable shared offices to remove the overhead for solopreneurs and startups. It's, it's, we're working on a community hacker maker space. <laughs> a series of monthly and weekly clinics offer free information for startups and seasoned businesses who need to focus on what's relevant in the new economy and general business topics. Youth programming down to primary grades to integrate kids into ent entrepreneurial leadership, innovation, and creative economy thinking and doing. I'm so happy that things are working. It all sounds like it's going great. I wish I could be there with you girls. I'm so proud of you. Now, how can you help the president and the leadership of this country understand the importance of what you're doing? You need to be on TV, on Fox News, telling everyone what you're doing. It's so important. They don't know. You need to tell them. It's never enough. So I share my story with you because I'm home now and I'm bringing a lifetime of learning and experience. I'm a very different girl from West Virginia than I was 20 some years ago. Those aha moments and more, and uh, I, it all comes together to bring it back home. The, the good thing is, is I'm not alone. There are others like me who are home now, others who want to come home, and others who never left who want to make this place a place for the new economy. They want to thrive in new and different ways while protecting what makes this place special, protecting the authenticity. The truth is that this state's been a great, great resource and a great source of prosperity for a few. The rest of the population works to make that possible. There are some pretty smart folks saying that the end of the small towns and small communities is near. Census st statistics estimate that uh, one out of three rural communities is going to disappear or are going to disappear in 10 years. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, West Virginia. What's the plan? Yeah, so uh, what is the plan? Everything has changed. Everything about how you do business, how you reach customers, how you attract community investment. It's all changed. Government economic development employees chasing traditional manufacturing companies and offering tax incentives, super cheap labor, lower environmental restrictions. That's old school. It's old school. It's short-sighted. It's not sustainable. We prove it every day. It's not sustainable. West Virginia has a chance to play a whole new role in the world economy. The new game is about attracting and retaining the kinds of people you want in your community who will do things right because they live there. They care about the quality of place. They care about their neighbors. This isn't utopia. There's still going to be problems to solve. But we're talking about attracting the kind of people that solve those problems. And they do it in a way that is good for people, the planet, and profit. They get it. The three legs of the stool, you kick one out, you can't have a standing stool. Stop kicking the legs out, folks. We're talking about attracting innovators, creators, thought leaders. They, we have standards, we have vision, we have energy, we have the kind of commitments to see things through, and we value everybody's contribution. But then again, who's asking us? And, and who am I talking about when I say us? We are the creative class of West Virginia. Dr. Richard Florida is the American economist and social scientist who first alerted the world that a fast-growing, highly educated, and well-paid segment of the workforce on whose efforts corporate America depends is large and in charge. These folks come across industries from technology to entertainment, journalism, finance, high-end manufacturing, to the arts. At the time, these creative economy folks didn't consciously think of themselves as a solidified group. They still don't in West Virginia. That's part of the plan. We need to communicate who is part of this creative economy and invite others to link up. The creative class now includes some 38.3 million Americans, 
We create new forms where scientists, where engineers, where university professors, where poets, where novelists, where artists, entertainers, where actors, designers, where architects, where thought leaders of modern society. Yeah, imagine placing West Virginia among the thought leaders of the world. Nonfiction writers, editors, cultural figures, think tank researchers, we create new forms or designs that are readily transferable and broadly useful. We work in a wide range of knowledge intensive industries, high tech, financial services, digital media, legal, healthcare, business management. We are the suits, people, we're the suits. So the plan is to work together to help West Virginia reinvent herself for the new economy by rethinking her assets, retraining for new opportunities, and redefining this place as, get ready for this, home to the most innovative, dynamic, creative communities in the world. Let's build rural, creative communities for the innovation economy. How's that for thinking big? The best thing about this plan is it's not just my idea. I'm one of a growing number of people in West Virginia who are insisting on being at the table for the conversation. So consider this your invitation to bring it all back home, to create a sustainable, thriving new economy in West Virginia and the places you will be from. Thank you. Someone's always leaving here. Someone's always leaving here. It's just that kind of place. It's just the kind of world today you learn to live with loss. The grass is always greener over on the other side. The air is always cleaner there. The sky is twice as wide. I'm not the kind to argue. I won't say it isn't true. It's just the kind of place for passing through.